Hey, check it out. It's a special issue. This is The Amazing Spider-Man number 262 from March of 1985, which means it was on shelves in December of 1984. What's so special about this? Well, you can see right away. It's right on the cover. It's got an actual human Peter Parker. What is happening? So this was just a cover idea they thought would be cool. Let's do a realistic photo shoot of a live actor as Spider-Man. And it matches a scene from inside the comic. So playing Peter Parker is stuntman Scott Leva, a Hollywood stuntman. He made his debut in the 1978 Christopher Reeve Superman movie. Uh, you can see him in the Spider-Man costume in an outtake of the X-Men film from the year 2000 where he was the stunt coordinator. You'll see him running down a hallway, I believe, up behind the other X-Men, and then they break up and start laughing. Here in the background, playing the photographer is the actual photographer of this cover, Elliot R. R. Brown. I don't know how he is the photographer of the photo and also in the photo. I also read that he's not actually holding a camera here. This is a tape dispenser. At the time of making this comic, there was a Spider-Man movie in the works from Canon Film, but it all fell through. The sets and the costumes for the Spider-Man movie and a sequel to the Dolph Lundgren Masters of the Universe movie that also didn't get made were all instead used for the Jean-Claude Van Damme film Cyborg. Now, now, this is a fill-in issue, which is basically what they call a comic that is made and shelved for whenever they fall behind in the schedule. They just grab the fill-in issue and stick it in so everything stays on schedule. This is completely written and drawn by Bob Layton. So as you can see, Spider-Man is in the classic red and blue costume, even though this is during the black costume era. He had started appearing in the black costume 10 issues before in issue 252, but by issue issue 258, he had learned that costume was an alien symbiote and he gave it over to the Fantastic Four. And he pulled out his old red and blue costume and he used this through issue 259, 260, 261, and 262. In the next issue, 263, he puts a black costume back on, but it's just a normal costume that was made for him by the Black Cat. Which is a character I hope we get to see in a Spider-Man film at some point. They always show Peter Parker and his girlfriends, Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane. They don't really really show him when he was dating Betty Brandt. But Spider-Man also had a girlfriend that wasn't Peter Parker's girlfriend, and that was the Black Cat. So I'd like to see her. I'd also like to see the Silver Sable. Anyways, he kept that normal, non-symbiote Black costume until issue 300. So back to the comic. Spider-Man is going to the airport because he wants to take pictures of President Ronald Reagan when he arrives in his Peter Parker disguise, you know, to sell those photographs to the Daily Bugle, because that is his job. Job. But all of these other photographers and reporters are showing up as well, including this slime ball, Dirty Jake Jones. I don't believe it. DJ Jones? I wonder what that sleazeball camera jockey is doing here. Probably hoping to catch Reagan with his fly unzipped. What a lousy way to make a buck. Who knows? Maybe I'll catch Reagan with his fly unzipped. Like the time Jackie O bent over and I... Oof! Hey, you dumb broad! Uh, I mean, I'm dreadfully sorry, miss. I'm afraid I wasn't watching where I was going. Please allow me to help collect your belongings. Uh, that, that's very kind of you, sir. It's so nice to know that there's a few gentlemen left in the world. Uh, thank you, miss. It was a pleasure bumping into you with the thing and the stuff, especially when your billfold will ensure a profit from this assignment. <laughs> so he's going to go sneak into a closet so he can hide the evidence that he just stole from this lady. And he runs into, oh my gosh, an undressed Spider-Man. Oh, wow. Hey, no. Spider-Man, instinctively, Joan's hands fumble for the camera dangling around his neck. Oh, wow. Stop. You can't. Must get that film before it's too late. Oh, jeez. Time to split. And he's gone. He runs so much faster than Spider-Man. He's greater than any Spider-Man villain ever. No man has ever moved as fast as Dirty Jake Jones. So now they're contemplating what to do with their future. Jake feels he's gotten a big break. Peter feels that he's really screwed up. Peter needs help, so he goes to see his old friend, Ben Urich. Wow, hiya, Ben. Got a minute? Well, about 30 to be exact. After that, this article misses its deadline. I can spare you five of them, though. Andy, nip it in the bud. 
Ben Urich identifies Dirty Jake Jones for Peter, and Peter is going to go track him down. In the meantime, Dirty Jake Jones is going to try to sell these photos to the criminal underworld. Okay, sport, name your poison. Well, I have some valuable information about Spider-Man that I want to sell. Thought you might know someone who'd be interested. I think I might be able to help you, bub. Why don't you do an about face? Oh, hey, what are you doing here, Double Knit? Oh, oh, hiya, fellas. Yeah, you heard Blue the Dog Meat. What do you want in here? Oh, oh, listen, guys, I think we can help each other. You see, I know Spider-Man's secret identity, and I can let your boss have him for a paltry m million dollars. So, so, so what do you say, boys? B boys? And he gets thrown right out. Meanwhile, in the back room of Scurvy Jacks. And so we threw him out, Mr. Danatale. Gentlemen, I want that weasel followed. Spider-Man's been a bust in our operations for years. And if this guy really has his secret, we can guarantee the safety of our business transactions from now on. So go after him, Benito, and get me that information, capiche? Uh, yes, sir, boss. At that moment, Peter Parker swings through the city suspended by thin, ultra-strong web strands of his own design in his guise as the Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, wow. I have to get those negatives. Once they're destroyed, all I have to worry about is Jones remembering my face. So Jake is leaving, but he's being followed unawares. Gets knocked into a closet, and the thugs are going to rough him up. They want him to hand over the photos free of charge. Just as he's about to, Spider-Man and finds them. What a lucky break. He goes in, roughs everyone up. Mr. Danatale, it's a trap. A Spider-Man was waiting for us. He just KO'd Benito and the other guys. Deutsch! This gives Jake an opportunity to leave, but he just runs into more of the gang. Spider-Man's still hot on the trail, and he thinks to himself, boy, I could just let Benito's gang take care of Jake and my problems are solved. But he remembers his old dead Uncle Ben and how he was directly responsible for killing his uncle and how he was indirectly responsible for his death. With great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man must act, and not in a Broadway show. Hey, we're in New York. Let's go to a Broadway show. So Spider-Man comes in and saves him. Biff pow zap, a little bit of nunchuck action, a little bit of web action, a little bit of uppercut action, pigeon toe action. Spidey takes out all the bad guys and captures Jake. Tries to give him a heart attack. When that doesn't work, scares him right into handing over the film negatives. Jake says, that's all right. I'll just see his face. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll see his face out there somewhere in the crowd on the streets of New York. And so ends this special issue of The Amazing Spider-Man.